Okay. So, um, Assalamualaikum and very good afternoon everyone. My name is Farah Dina Yusof. I am currently Director of EDAC um, and Dr. Zahiruddin Fitri, my Deputy Director, will also be uh, with you soon. I think he has several technical issues that he needs to solve. Okay, so um, uh, thank you everyone and um, thank you for uh, being patient with the technical issues that um, uh, I have. Um, so uh, today, the two of us are, is going to, are going to introduce to you uh, micro-credentials um, at UM. Uh, although we say micro-credential, it, it covers both uh, the, the both type of online courses, which is MOOC and micro-credential. So uh, the definition of uh, micro-credential and uh, to, uh, to an extent, uh, MOOC is actually a digital certification of uh, and assess knowledge. So uh, skills and competencies in uh, any areas of the field. And uh, this can be either a component of accredited program. So that means the program that we teach or we offer as uh, an education institution, uh, our course uh, that we teach, or it can also be a standalone course. So that means a standalone course may be something that we are passionate about, uh, something that we have the expertise uh, about, that uh, can support uh, professional, technical, academic, and personal development of learners. So basically, it can be something that's from uh, the university uh, program that we teach, and also it also can be our professional uh, accreditations uh, with, like, like for example, uh, professional bodies that we are affiliated to. Um, and this can also be something, uh, a standalone course that uh, can be used for uh, lifelong learning uh, skills and also competencies that we want to, want to offer. And all of this is actually uh, being, um, being approved by MQA back in May 2020. Uh, next page, please. Yeah. Um, as an, sort of a, an um, umbrella view of uh, micro-credential and MOOC platform, um, at a glance, uh, you can see that uh, there are many platforms that offer uh, both micro-credential and MOOC. Uh, the, the one that we are working with is FutureLearn. Uh, other, other public universities in Malaysia, some of them are using open learning, but there are also uh, other micro-credential uh, platforms like uh, Coursera, EDX, and Udacity, which have different names for their micro -credential. So Coursera calls them uh, my, uh, specialization, EDX calls them micro-masters, uh, Udacity calls them uh, nano-degrees. But we, uh, since 2016, have been working with uh, a platform called FutureLearn, and this is our official platform that we are offering our courses on. Next page. Okay, so um, um, uh, click again. Okay, so um, the, um, the difference between the three modes of online courses, between MOOC and micro credential and online degree, is that uh, a MOOC course um, is typically something that you offer uh, for uh, for uh, a short period of weeks, so between one to eight weeks, and it is uh, what we call uh, short courses. Um, and the study hours for the MOOCs can be uh, between two to four, or it can be uh, higher hours of learning per week. Can you click again, Mr. Farah? Okay, so, so MOOC, the, the difference between MOOC and micro credential is actually the uh, the business model of, of MOOC. so the business model for MOOC is um, what we call free to learn, pay to be certified. That means the learners in the platform or on the platform can join any course that's being offered at the platform, and they don't have to pay uh, to complete the whole course. The only pay the the only uh, time that they will be asked to pay is when they wish to get a certificate for the course. So that is uh, what we call the MOOC course. And then uh, for a micro-credential, uh, the, 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 the accreditation that comes from micro-credential is actually uh, when the paywall is actually being uh, presented uh, first. So that means uh, an MC, because it gives you the, 
the uh, guarantee credit by the university, then uh, you uh, are expected to uh, study longer hours. So that means between eight to ten, probably up to twelve hours a week in the MC course. And normally the 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 duration of the course is going to be longer. So it can be it can take up to uh, uh, fourteen weeks, for example, like the program that we offer uh, as our uh, semester course. And the and the payment for the MC course is actually paid for. So it's 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 some somewhat similar to the model of um, uh, degree or uh, course or program offering that we have in the university. And then what we uh, should uh, aspire to, but still we are uh, working on this, is actually uh, an online degree. So from uh, uh, a collection of uh, micro-credential courses that we offer as a program, then you can actually use the program certificate for a traditional university degree. So that means if you're working towards, for example, a master's in educational technology, then uh, it can be a compilation of several uh, MC courses that you take. Or you can also use the program certificate from the MC, even from MOOC sometimes, to uh, enhance your CV, your professional CV, so, or uh, for the learners to enhance their career. So for example, if you wanted to, uh, let's say, uh, apply uh, to uh, a higher position in a company, so somebody, uh, one of the learners would like to apply a higher position in a company, and they are able to show to their uh, employers they, uh, hey, I actually have uh, gone through uh, this course from University of Malaya uh, and I've got certificate to show it. Then uh, the chances for me uh, to get that uh, career rise uh, or the pay rise would be higher. So, so that's the, 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 the whole um, um, principle, or the whole um, uh, discussion around um, what MOOCs, MC and plus at the end uh, online degree is for. Uh, next, please. Okay, so um, when you look at uh, the MC, so this is the, uh, the 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 difference, the main difference. Just now we are we are we are looking at up to the um, uh, online degree, isn't it? But so this is uh, how MOOC and micro credentials are uh, further defined, further uh, sort of separated. So uh, when you are working on a uh, MOOC or working on the detailing or uh, offering uh, micro-credentials, then you you need to keep this in mind. So that means when you develop your, your micro-credential courses, for example, you need to know that um, it should come from university credits. And actually it makes your uh, life a little bit easier because you are working based on the programs to, that normally you are already teaching at your uh, faculty. So, but MOOC, for example, is actually a little bit um, uh, out there. So that means you need to redesign the whole uh, learning experience. So that then, because uh, this is more normally geared towards um, uh, lifelong learning uh, types of, um, of, of skills and competencies that you are trying to go after. Uh, next. Okay, so um, normally the certificate will uh, give you uh, uh, the details on uh, the, the modules that you have taken, uh, what were the learning outcomes, and what were the learning contents uh, that um, is uh, being offered. And I think um, uh, this the, the, this is how uh, the universities can actually uh, move the, the 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 credits or to uh, to certify the credits uh, for the universities when they. Um, uh, ask for the transfer from their uh, MC or MOOC courses. Next. Okay, so so these are uh, separate examples of uh, uh, MOOC or MC courses. So this is from the uh, University of Griffith, um, where they offer. Uh, so this is uh, at the postgraduate level. So I think normally uh, or 
yeah, uh, normally or generally when you look at uh, the, the model for online courses, uh, it's uh, normally geared towards for uh, those who can actually pay for um, the the MC uh, courses. And normally the, the learners are those who, uh, how, how do you say it? Time poor. So that means they can't really enroll into the university uh, full time. Uh, but then they still wanted to uh, sort of build up their um, their credentials so that then they can uh, join the university later. So, so this is an example from uh, Griffith University. Uh, next, so these are uh, more examples. So these are different examples, and this is just literature courses. Um, next, uh, next please. So these are uh, more, um, so there are actually a lot of uh, courses. Uh, so this is just uh, MOOC courses. So these are standalone. Can you see it? if you can see the details there? It shows uh, one uh, from Edinburgh is four weeks, two hours a week. Uh, the one from the Open University is eight weeks, uh, three hours a week. And then you also have um, uh, from uh, British Council, which is uh, six weeks and then uh, two hours a week. Uh, so next. So this is uh, an example for micro credential. So micro credential normally you will have um, a two distinct model. Either you offer one single course uh, at a longer uh, longer hours or a longer time. For example, the Open University tackling the climate crisis. So it's just a single course, uh, but carried over ten weeks at the undergraduate level. And then if you compare that with the University of Kent. You see, this, these are actually three courses, so that uh, and they have twelve weeks. So that means uh, probably um, they have one course at four weeks, uh, four weeks time period, and then uh, followed by another four weeks time period for another course, and then followed at um, another three and another four weeks um, or four weeks. Uh, so that makes uh, three courses, and the accumulation of the twelve weeks gives them or gives the learners. Uh, micro credential from University of Kent. Next. So these are uh, other examples uh, from uh, different universities, uh, Open Universities, Deakin Universities, Glasgow, uh, and you can see the different way of uh, them offering their uh, micro credential. And these are just uh, on, on business and management. Uh, next. Okay. Uh, another category of courses that uh, we, um, we would like you to consider to develop are expert tracks. So at expert tracks are geared towards um, a specific uh, industrial need normally. And uh, it can be offered uh, together with uh, like institute, for example, uh, Malaysian Chartered Accountants Institute or it can be offered with, for example, different um, technology providers. So if you look at the CAPSIF Global System course, is actually um, accredited by Microsoft itself. So expert track is geared towards uh, the professional uh, development, uh, especially in professional development in um, uh, an in-depth courses and also uh, uh, a linkage between University and industry. So uh, the institutes, uh, the the research institute. Probably you you uh, can uh, work out a course, for example, with with CIRIM, for example, uh, to offer uh, as an expert track, right? and that is something that um, you can also um, offer. Another type of expert track right? courses are courses that comes for that comes for professional uh, development hours or CPD uh, in um, in professional bodies. So CPD hours uh, can uh, be offered in the um, platform uh, as expert tracks. Next page please. So how does expert track work? So uh, you can see, uh, so this is uh, from the platform uh, feature that we uh, are working with. So it, it gives you a seven day free trial and then um, you play a monthly subscription until you complete uh, the tracks. 
and you earn the digital digital certificates normally signed by uh, the the university uh, educator and also the somebody from the uh, professional uh, body or from the institute so that is uh, how you uh, showcase the the skills and also the competencies in the uh, area of the expertise next so what we uh, would uh, uh, try to uh, we would like to uh, try to, to uh, pursue with uh, our university uh, is actually to collaborate uh, for you to collaborate uh, with a professional body to offer as I said for CPD courses you can also uh, collaborate with uh, certain institutes that that gives out or that uh, that accredits certification to offer uh, an expert track certificate of course it's going to be jointly signed by um which is you or you are actually a professor in any um, uh, specific field and you are a world-renowned expert and then you can actually create a course uh, that is endorsed by you as the expert in uh, whatever field for example sustainability um, or you know uh, those kind of um, uh, expertise that you are well known for okay next and if you compare that with micro credentials uh, that uh, we are uh, actually very um, very very highly recommend uh, and what we uh, expect the university is uh, really really uh, wanting to uh, develop courses for um, uh, for the platform is that um, uh, the micro credential is uh, designed uh, so that it becomes um, uh, a part of uh, the university uh, credit that you can actually convert into a transferable credits for a university degree. So uh, it's almost similar to the courses that we teach. It can be uh, done over 12 or 16 weeks, or, uh, or no, and uh, normally our courses would be uh, around uh, 10 to um, 10 to 14 weeks, like our semester. Uh, and then, of course, uh, because you are going to earn, or the learners are going to earn uh, uh, a credit uh, from the university, then there will be um, exams, also assessments. Uh, that uh, will, will need to be uh, taken by the learners and then um, with that uh, after you finish or, or after the learners has finished all the learning and passes all the assessment they will get uh, a guarantee credit uh, from the university and um, uh, the way that we can actually um, uh, design our micro credential uh, courses uh, is that we can design uh, the courses so it, it uh, fits into uh, the, the courses or the programs that we are uh, teaching so uh, you can develop it uh, as a as part of a, a bigger strategic move that uh, will actually in the in the long run becomes an online uh, degree offering that you, you are trying to offer uh, next page so this is an example of um, uh, UK credits um, and uh, that you will get. Uh, so this, uh, but in Malaysia, uh, based on the credit transfer calculation, 10, 10 UK credits is around uh, three credits uh, of our, our 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 calculation. So you can see uh, from the first example, uh, 10 credits from uh, Open University at the undergraduate level. And then uh, the next example, the one at the bottom is actually at the postgraduate level. Uh, it's also uh, 10, cred 10, cred 10 UK credits, which is equivalent to our, our three credits uh, here in, in Malaysia. So you can actually bring those, those, those credits to any uh, institution that is offering to uh, accept uh, the credits from an online uh, platform. Uh, like uh, uh, FutureLand, and the the credits uh, because it is a uh, university, it is, it, it is university accredited. Then you, you can also uh, transfer those uh, credits to other universities. So that is, is the, the the sort of the beauty of uh, having um, 
micro credentials with university credits. It can be actually be transferred to other university. So, for example, uh, you develop a course uh, uh, for, um, uh, for example, sustainability uh, or on the topic of um, uh, waste disposal, for example, uh, which is part of your program. The, the micro credentials that the, the learners gain of course, uh, will uh, be useful or be, will be convert can be converted in University Malaya, but at the same time, it can be converted at other universities. So the, the potential is, is actually uh, quite big. Um, next, so this is um, an online degree. So I'm not I'm not going to talk uh, about this um, uh, too long. So so actually, universities have already started to offer uh, online degrees. So this is. Uh, University of Newcastle, Australia, they have started to offer a Bachelor of Arts uh, online. So uh, this is something that we can work on uh, over the long run. So we don't have to worry about this now, but the strategic directions uh, that your university, and uh, sorry, that your uh, department or your faculty takes on uh, de designing and also developing uh, the MOOC courses or the micro-credential courses will actually uh, uh, should have a, like a forward think to um, in the end offer uh, an online degree probably in five to ten, ten, ten years time. Next page. Okay. Um, so these are uh, the courses that we have now in University of Malaya. So these are uh, our MOOC courses actually. Uh, and there are ten courses. Uh, so one courses one course is from uh, Faculty of Science, and then we also have courses from APM. We have uh, courses from uh, Engineering. Uh, next page. So these are um, the the other courses uh, from Medicine um, and also from FBS, which uh, uh, is uh, quite popular right now. Uh, learning languages. Next. Okay. So these are uh, the rest of the 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 course. So this is. Um, the one from AI, uh, which is multiculturalism in, AS, in ASEAN. Uh, next. Okay, so these are the course uh, that we are designing as an MC. So this will actually convert into uh, transferable UMC credits, uh, not just uh, here uh, in UM, but also uh, elsewhere uh, if the university will take it. One course is building pathology. Uh, and then the second is actually instruction design and then for the society. So these are uh, uh, geared towards uh, my, my micro credential, and we wish to open this course um, latest by uh, this year. Next, okay. So these are the the current courses that we are developing um, for this year only. Uh, for this year alone, uh, there's 20, 26. Uh, we are working with uh, different faculties, uh, almost all of the uh, PTJ are uh, involved and uh, from what we uh, see, uh, from what the, uh, the, the Vice Chancellor is uh, promoting, so this is actually part of the trans transformation plan and also the, the strategic plan for the university on uh, different areas to uh, to liberalize um, education uh, for income generation as well. Next. Okay, so these are uh, the, the list. Next. Okay, so, um, okay, probably this is something that uh, Dr. Parah can uh, continue. Yes, okay. Thank you, Dr. Zahi. So, I will talk more about the implementation of micro-credential in our UM context. Yeah? So based on what we have discussed with the TNCA as well as the uh, management, there is a KPI for each faculty. Okay, So one faculty or academy or center should have one micro-credential course per year, every year. Okay, So our definition of micro-credential, okay, as Dr. Zahi has mentioned, um, is actually like a program which contains two or more related courses. Let's say uh, you have a course on let's learn Portugal. Okay, the first course is introduction to Portugal. 
The second course is the grammar of uh, Portugal, Portuguese language, something like that. Okay, so we wanted all faculty to have at least one MC per year. So in terms of our um, targets, this year we should have 15 okay, MC course uh, because one faculty should contribute to one. MC, so we have about 15 PTJs, so it should be 15. So the next year, well, the number will be uh, added, so it will be 20. Okay, so it means that some of the faculty will need to add more. This is new numbers, eh? 20 new courses in 2023, 2024, and 2025. Okay. Okay, some people have asked us, Adek, about uh, the KPI uh, calculation. Okay, so this is what we know from uh, TNCA's uh, meeting with uh, deans and directors. For all micro-credential courses, uh, they, they assign 20 points per course. So what happened is that once you complete the MC course, we will send your names to, um, I, can't, I don't know the name of the new one, HTD or HTM, the uh, previously called BSM, Bahagian Sumber Manusia UM. Okay, and they will be the one who will uh, insert or input your uh, 20 points in your KPI system. Okay. So let's go to part two of this talk, which is the curriculum design of micro-credential. Anyway, if you have questions, um, you can type in the chat area um, so that our moderator will, um, they can read to us once uh, the FAQ session is open there. Okay, let's take an example from Faculty of Education. This is just a simulation. So each faculty have several academic programs, okay? In this situation or in this simulation, let's say Faculty of Education have three uh, academic programs. Number one is Bachelor of Counseling, Bachelor of Education TESOL, and Bachelor of Early Childhood Education. So um, how you start first is, Think about one program that is very high demand, very interest, uh, you have a lot of interest from the public. So you take one program, okay? So let's say in this case, we take Bachelor of Early Childhood Education. This is also a popular co uh, program in faculty. Yeah? Okay, so each program have their own uh, courses. Let's say in this simulation, we have one, two, three, four, five courses. Okay, each of these courses, um, is three credit hours and to be completed within 14 weeks. Okay, so in typical, uh, traditional, uh, I can't say traditional, in our current way of teaching and learning in UM, uh, this is uh, the structure. Okay, so you have structured program, you have uh, specific candidature time, also all the students are registered as UM students. Okay, once you have to, once you have to identify, once you have identified the program, take one course from the whole program that you wanted to develop as micro-credential course. Okay, let's say in this case, we take the number three, course number three, which is introduction to instructional technology. Okay, figure out, okay, so the lecturer of the course has to figure out what are the main topics in that course. Okay, sometimes when we design our course in the Proforma, we will see what are the main topics and we started to divide topics uh, based on weeks then. Okay, so in this simulation, let's say uh, there are four main topics in this course, okay? And then we will start to divide the topics into subtopics, okay, into that detail. Okay, let's say in topic number three that we, we chose topic number three, conducting need analysis, Okay, and there are uh, four subtopics in it. Okay, so you wanted to introduce the four types of need analysis. Okay, in this case, there are four uh, type of analysis and those are what we call subtopics. Okay, if your course um, can stop there, okay, so that will be your micro-credential course, meaning that we can take one course, uh, sorry, we can take one uh, topic and then 
uh, divide into subtopics and th those will be your micro credential cost if you can have you know you can uh, under the subtopics you can divide it again we call it module you make it smaller and the smallest unit in instruction is called modules okay let's say number one topic subtopic number one in assessment you wanted to uh, introduce the five types of needs okay so uh, that's how it works that's why the name is micro okay micro means the smallest unit of instruction okay if you um, wanted to plan your micro credential this is how you can start okay think about a program and then one course that you think you want to develop into mc course and then the lecturers have to further divide the topics into subtopics and also the modules okay just to let you know okay uh, quite contrary to our traditional or or, or um, current ways of delivering uh, instruction okay micro credentials is totally online okay it is a structured program why it is called structured because we have topic and subtopics and then we have modules okay so for each topic there will be some learning activities for example students have to watch animations or pre-recorded videos okay and followed by assessment for each subtopic yeah so assessment could be in terms of um you know mini quiz or a discussion okay um however there is no fixed course time or course schedule okay it the time is limitless meaning that the students can take their own convenient time and they can uh, complete the course at their own uh, convenient time <laughs> okay and this is self-paced learning there is no interaction between the lecturer and the learners okay, you don't have to worry about that they will learn uh, on their own okay and there is no specific candidature time okay like for example right now if you want to um, be uh, want to be graduated with bachelor of education uh, you have to complete it within three years time for example but in micro credential the time is not uh, an issue okay um, and students do not need to register as um students they are not um students okay this one okay so the big picture how we implement micro credentials at um there are we are thinking about what we're thinking we are currently developing two types of micro credentials just for your information the mqa has um divided micro credentials into three types okay so i have a slide of other okay type number one is existing academic courses the one that you are teaching right now and you will need to further develop it into an online totally online course okay with the name of micro credential course okay and then we have type three okay uh, type three are standalone courses this could be for example professional development courses for example in edec we run the emerald program for the new lecturers okay in uh, there are 14 modules in that emerald program and we would like to develop it as a professional development mc micro credential or you may want to think about uh, what is your faculties or your programs niche area it may not relate to existing academic course but you are known with that expertise okay for example islamic calligraphy by apm academy pengajian melayu this is one of the popular courses in our future learn platform in, sorry in our um future learn uh, platform okay or do you have any summer school programs a very short one and you wanted the some uh, it, it, you wanted your students maybe your is it outbound or inbound students to take this course so aei aei and umcast for example they may have such courses so what is number two okay oh, people always ask what is number uh, what is type two okay type two are courses that you run together with another institution for example one course uh, conducted by university malaya and university in japan okay so at the moment we are not uh, focusing on that okay we would like to focus more on type one existing academic course and type three standalone course okay now 
uh, as I mentioned, these are, if you want to make it into hierarchy, you can see that micro-credentials at UL, we have this uh, picture, academic, acad uh, sorry, typical existing academic program, which will then uh, follow, followed by the program, the course, the topic, and the module. Okay, or professional development, niche area programs, and summer school programs. Yeah. Okay. You may uh, wonder how does it work? Okay, we are all lecturers. Myself also a lecturer, Dr. Zahib also a lecturer. We are teaching 14 weeks course just like you. Okay, so how do you embed micro credential in your existing course? You don't have to double teach, huh? you can embed it uh, and run it parallel with your current course. Okay, let's say you are teaching one course named research methodology. Week one until week three, you conduct the class as usual using the spectrum um, platform until week 11. Okay, so week one until week 11, you run the course uh, as usual using spectrum and your Microsoft Teams uh, meeting and so on. But Starting week 12, week 13, and week 14, you can ask your students to go to the Future Learn platform. Okay, they can learn on their own. Okay, self-paced learning in Future Learn platform. You don't have to teach them anything because the module that we have developed, okay, um, is very self-explanatory. So you can have like a teaching break uh, for the three weeks. Heaven, again. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, so your students um, learn and, and do the activities in the course and also um, do the assessment. So you can combine them both. So it's not a double thing. Okay, what are the benefits of micro-credential to micro-credential lecturers or in adject terms we call MC developers? Okay, number one, this is very important. When you engage with micro-credential program okay, with EDEC, we help you to create your learning objects. Okay, what are learning objects? Okay, learning objects are learning materials that you use to explain the topic. Okay, it could be videos, could be animations, whatever teaching aids, teaching and learning aids. Okay, sometimes those in the uh, sciences, they may have difficulties to visualize um, their are topics. So we are helping you to create a learning object. Okay, we create it just once, but you can reuse it many times. For example, we create it for this uh, year, January 2022. When you teach um, the next semester in October 2022, you still can use it. And perhaps for as long as your course exists in UM. Okay, so that's a, a good benefit for you. Number two, you can also create national and international presence through MC. We chose Future Learn platform. The platform is based in UK. Okay, based on our records, um, most of the learners that uh, participate in our MC courses are coming from the Western countries. So this is a good introduction to you and your course. Who knows, you may get some collaborations with them. Who knows, okay? You can also satisfy yourself, challenge yourself with the new ways of teaching. Okay, this is also healthy uh, and good for your professional growth, okay? Next, as I mentioned, you can give yourself a teaching break on certain weeks, okay? Ask your students to self-learn um, independent learning using the FutureLearn platform and you can just monitor their progress, okay? Uh, help your students to learn better, okay? Especially if you are um, teaching courses that are very, very, you know, very technical, hard for students to remember, they need some visuals to help them learn better, okay? They can learn better using the micro-credential course because they are learning objects that we have created with you, okay? So they can learn through the multimedia, the repetition, okay? Uh, the drill and practice so you know because they are learning uh, on their own if they don't understand the concept they can just uh, apa tu? tekan butang apa yang ke belakang rewind <laughs> or move forward it, it it's uh, they have the control uh, on their own learning okay 
and they are also learn to make mistakes in a safe environment okay what does that mean <laughs> okay uh, let's say you are teaching something very very hazardous like chemical uh, reactions okay maybe in a lab setting uh, the students uh, learn through this is just my imagination sorry yeah chemist chemistry people if i present it wrongly but what i imagine is that you ask the students to add one substance another substance and two you know like boom things like that huh? so if you're making it into animations online they keep on they can keep on repetitive repetitively making the mistakes until they find the right answer or the right ingredient chemical ingredient okay so for the faculty and department you can also benefit from the micro credential number one you can support your faculty's growth you can get your faculty's name out there okay you create national and international presence and reputation okay which is very good uh, suddenly people know faculty of education people in the western countries faculty of education in malaysia this is also good for your ranking for example if you're into that eh? and also an opportunity for your staff to relearn and upskill themselves okay, if you are interested to know more okay uh, we have already uh, published this micro credentials at um guideline but this one is quite old we should work on um uh, updated version you can find it um at edact.um.edu.my so i hope you are already interested okay so let's proceed to the next part which is how to start okay no worry we are with you okay we have uh, a team of eight people in edact to help you start your micro credential Okay, headed by our uh, dear AR, Perlinda, um, and Norashida Omar, who are the project managers for UM. Uh, if you have interest, start to contact them, talk to them, your ideas, and they will call the other members in the team to meet with you and to brainstorm with you uh, to facilitate your progress. Okay, so the other member of the teams are Nurul Jana. Nur Shafiqah, Muhammad Anis, Wan Nur Izzati. Though these people are instructional designers, okay, they can help you see how you can break down your course into topics, subtopics, and possibly modules as well. It okay, can also help you uh, to think about or to choose which um, learning materials you wanted to use. Maybe they will advise this is uh, should be animated, this one should be pre-recorded videos, and so on. Okay that's their expertise okay uh, some of them also videographer and graphic designer let's say you need help with um you know creating certain videos in the lab okay i know that they have been um visiting the pharmaceutical lab a pharmaceutical lab and a video shoot the entire process of making a, a drug okay it can be done um, we have also graphic designer is that the um, you probably need something to be redraw okay so that uh, we don't have copyright issues she can help you with that and together with Huzairi and Azrul um, they are um, the technical uh, person they will help you with the logistics okay so start contacting them. You can contact for Linda, that's the email, or you can contact edact at um.edu.mine. I will simplify how to start in three main steps or main phases. Number one, just you have to plan. That's your role. We can't help you much in that. Okay, you have to think which course that you wanted to transform into micro credential. Okay, you may want to think about existing academic course or any professional development course. Let's say, uh, as Dr. Zahi mentioned, you have an um, external training opportunity with a professional body. You keep on uh, doing it uh, with them. So you wanted this time to make it into micro-credential, do talk to us about that. So we ha you have to decide. I just wanted to remind everyone, okay, now that you're excited and <laughs> interested, uh, hold on. Talk to your head of department first. Okay, maybe your department 
and your program or your faculty have their own thinking which one they wanted to develop. Remember, remember the first uh, slide that Dr. Zahi mentioned just now? It started with online course or MOOC, a okay, very small course. And then you can develop into micro-credential program, okay, meaning two or more courses, more related courses as a micro-credential program. And later on, it can be developed into online degree. Okay, so that's why you have to talk to your head of department or even better to your deputy dean or uh, dean. Okay, maybe they have in future, they're thinking about um, have one program in the, in the faculty totally online. Okay, as an online degree. So work that uh, from the, the, you know, the, the online degree and then you um, uh, go backward into the uh, my, my micro credential programs and then we can help you develop the courses. Okay. You need also to think about who will be involved. Do you want to develop the MC course yourself? Or you want to make it into a team based effort? Okay, we have helped both format. Okay, there are pros and cons when you work alone and with your team. Okay, sometimes it's, um, it make it easy if you work alone. Sometimes you don't have all the expertise, you will need help. So team-based will be good for you. Okay, uh, sometimes you are much faster working alone. Okay, <laughs> and team will slow you down. Because if one person not contributing well, the, the, there will be a delay with the production. Okay, you have to really think about that. Okay, in terms of market, it will be good once the course has been published um, uh, in the uh, Future Learn platform. You have learners, you have interested people sign up for it. Okay, otherwise it's a waste. Okay, you have wasted your time uh, to develop and, and publish the course, but no one would want to take your course. So first you have to think, who will be the market? Can you sell your micro-credential course to certain uh, association, for example, maybe medical association, accountancy association? It sounds wrong as an example. Okay, maybe certain types of students, okay, or a company, or certain agencies, or even public. So once you have everything ready, now let's go uh, working with Adaptive. We are always ready to help you. We can help you arrange your topics into subtopics and subcontent. We help you decide the best format to deliver, and we help you to develop the learning objects with you. Uh, okay, with <laughs> meaning that we are working together. We are not the expert in the content area. We need your expertise. Okay, we know how to video shooting, video edit, okay, that part you don't have to worry. But without your input, we cannot move, okay? That's why um, you need to be there working with us, okay? And yeah, finally, we'll help you with the course review. Okay, course review meaning we will invite uh, maybe one or two experts in your field and just to go through your course and see what is missing, what can be improved and so on. Okay, once everything is ready, we will send uh, or we submit your course to FutureLearn. And there are several instructional designers in FutureLearn team who will review your course and see whether your course is, um, you know, suitable for which cluster. They have several clusters, for example, language cluster and so on. They can help you with that. They can also help suggest the course price. Okay, remember um, for MOOC courses, Learn for free, pay later when they want to get the certificate, okay? Or with MC course, they have, the learners have to pay at upfront. So the, the price will be suggested by FutureLearn, okay? And then you can publish at FutureLearn. Okay, I want to stop talking here. So perhaps we can open for any questions, moderator. All right, uh, do we have any questions, participants? Uh, I'm you Dr. can just Ma unmute yourself. Hello? Hi. Ah, okay, Dr. I'm Dr. Maja, is it? Yeah, I'm from All right, go on. Faculty of Medicine. Um, just now you mentioned that the uh, MC courses must be at least 6 to 14 weeks. Can it be shorter? 
because of mine i'm planning to, to do it only for four weeks is that possible of course um you you can have a, a shorter uh, course actually it depends on the the learning content that you have and our instructional designers would um, uh, look at the learning contents and they will uh, be able to uh, after they have uh, sort of um, separated or um, uh, arranged the learning contents uh, you will be, they will be able to suggest to you how many weeks uh, the the courses will be because we do a uh, uh, SLT calculations uh, we, so we have a way to to calculate the student learning time uh, to to reflect uh, the the supposed uh, proper hours of learning so you what you do is you design the case so i want this course to be uh, so you give us the content so and then you say okay uh, i want the course to be 3 hours or 4 hours uh, learning for for a week so they will actually uh, then go into the content that you, uh, you, you provided and then they will actually look at the, the content uh, separated into subtopic and then they will be able to uh, tell you okay so this is actually if you want it to be three hours or four hours then it will be x and x weeks if you want it to be longer for example uh, four weeks or five weeks then uh, you can actually shorten the, the hour, learning hours to two hours or three hours so, so that's uh, part of the design service that we provide to our lectures. If, my, if I can add to that, um, Dr. Um, Dr. Sapa, Dr. Fauzia. Mazia. 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 Oh, Dr. Mazia. Okay. Um, our ways of counting the weeks quite different from the week that we are practicing in UM because we are counting the number of activities that learners have to complete online. Okay. So if you look at this, uh, screen as an example, uh, introduction to Malay language. Uh, it's a three week course and two hours per week. So how do we come up with the two hours per week? We will design based on the number of steps. I uh, call it steps or activities. For example, let's say um, watching video, uh, watching two minute videos. Okay, that is a certain uh, numbers. Uh, so after we calculate everything, we we will come up with a three weeks course. But the hal is not really three weeks pun sebenarnya. And this learner can just do it uh, if they are concentrating enough. Uh, in within six, you see, six hours, even in a day, they can already complete your course. So you don't have to worry with that. Yeah. Okay, any other okay. question from the floor? I have one more. Sorry, I have one more question. Um, what is the past? You have an uh, end of end of course assessment, right? Uh, what is the passing mark, and can it be only MCQ based questions? Is it fifty percent or is it sixty five percent? Because we have to design the number of questions in order to allow the students to pass easily, lah. So I just want to know what's the passing mark. If I can answer that, eh, Dr. Zahis, good job. Okay, uh, when you design and publish uh, MC course, it's not um, similar to our current course. Remember, just now I am I showed to you that I tried to find this slide. It's on. Okay. You just um, develop it for certain weeks, kan? This one. Katakanlah... Uh, Okay, only for week 12 to week 14. Okay, so is the scope is very small. Okay, you can have the assessment um, for week 1 until week 11. So on week 12 to 14, you can just uh, uh, top up, uh, tambah sahaja. Okay, uh, and, and we don't call it 60%, uh, 40%. It's not like that. It's just um, a simple assessment for each subtopic. Am I, am I clear ke? Oh, Dr. Zahir boleh bagi clear explanation. Okay. So I think um, uh, there's um, uh, a different um, methodology or a different mindset to uh, online courses. Um, although yes, uh, we can do um, uh, a, a normal assessment like, uh, like a mark assessment that we do uh, for our students and even the, the platform also allows for that. Uh, the, the the philosophy behind uh, online courses uh, on future learning platforms actually social learning 
and what social learning means is that uh, we design the course so that learners will learn together with their peers. Uh, of course, we would have to moderate those 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 social learning uh, by going into the comments and then uh, sort of uh, uh, looking at the comments, uh, replying for uh, uh, to some of the comments. But uh, in terms of passing marks, actually we are the one who design uh, the passing mark, and we we have the liberty and also the flexibility to uh, uh, to determine. Uh, what passing mark we, we want. So uh, if we say uh, uh, that uh, learners must uh, sort of complete seven, uh, complete and get like 70% of the uh, what you call what of the assessment inside the, the platform, then uh, that will be uh, the uh, sort of passing mark uh, that uh, uh, the students or the learners need to aim for. And we will actually have to declare uh, the, the kind of passing marks that we expect the students especially in the micro credential course, because uh, they are paying up front, isn't it? For, for micro credential course, they are paying up front. Uh, that means um, they, and, and it comes with university credit. So uh, the the rigor in assessment is actually higher uh, for uh, micro credential as compared to a MOOC course where, where you can actually have a, a certificate of participation after you have completed uh, just the learning without uh, completing all the assessment. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Thank you. Do we have any more questions from the participants? In the chat, ada. Um, the chat, chat tak ada. Hi. Hi, hi uh, Dr. Farah, Dr. Zahir. I'm Shini from Faculty of Medicine. Um, my, my understanding is that the reason why we are doing micro-credentialing course is uh, to generate income, kan? So how, how does this work actually? Once uh, uh, one of our staff does uh, a course, then how how, how does this uh, come to the department or the faculty or to UM? Uh, I would argue that um, uh, with proper strategic uh, thinking, it's not just for, um, for income generation. You can actually channel a, a lot of... Um, uh, of marketing, a lot of um, like uh, student recruitment, a lot of um, uh, expert identification, uh, 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 to showcasing your your expertise uh, in the micro credential course. So, so uh, the the avenue in which micro credential course happens um, is not limited to just uh, the income generation. Although yes, uh, we can actually gen generate income, good income actually. Uh, if we do the micro credentials uh, right, but there are other potentials that we can tap uh, from having an online presence uh, in an international platform uh, like Future. For your information, uh, the number of learners in the platform itself is, is uh, right, right now is about 17 million. So that is 17 million potential learners that we can actually attract, um, uh, and some of them might. Um, after like uh, uh, going through our micro credentials, we want to actually come and study in UM themselves, and that is something that we uh, actively pursue. So, in in all the micro credential course, uh, all the online courses that we create in UM, we tell the developers, please, please um, promote your program, promote your department, so that then people will actually want to come in. Oh, okay. 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 I, get, I get what you mean. Thank you so much for your answer. We have a question in the chat area. Uh, what is the minimum number of students we need to have in order to, en to roll our program? Uh, I, I, I don't understand the, the, the context uh, of the question. Can okay, maybe Dr. Zuhairi, Dr. Zuhairi um, can, maybe you can, want to... Explain a bit. Maybe it's just to start the program. Is there a minimum number of students? If but that is the question, then the answer is no. You don't have, you don't yeah, need yeah. a minimum number. So you can actually right. have, have offer any yeah. course uh, that uh, 
is within your area of expertise within the program offering that you are uh, doing right now uh, to be the uh, the uh, the micro credential or the course. So Another after thing, the, the, the yes. uh, uh, we use micro credentials and the tar uh, to target uh, non UM learners. Okay, we are targeting. Uh, people who are not registered as UM students. We are targeting new market, new people. Um, you know, people may be coming from different region. Okay, so no worry about that. Okay, if I can share, you can look uh, at the screen now. Okay, this is the Future Learn uh, courses. Okay, if you go to futurelearn.com, then partners in Simlaya. So we have 10 courses so far. Okay, and if I can show you Course number one, Chemo Metrics in Air Pollution. There are 1,075 students already in, on, enrolled on this course. Okay, the second one from the Faculty of Engineering, also 1,960 people. Research Ethics uh, from uh, Faculty of Medicine, 380 people enrolled. And our most popular one, Islamic Calligraphy, you can see the number of people in this course is actually 8,000 and almost 800 people, 8,800 people. So each of the course have its own potential, okay? Um, it depends on, you are not thinking about your own students now. You are going to have your, you know, open students from other countries perhaps, or even non-UM. So there is no uh, number, uh, minimum number of students for the current program, okay? Sorry, one more question. The students who are enrolled in the course courses, are they enrolled in a spe specific time concurrently or at their own pace? I mean, at uh, their own time and leisure? Um, yeah, so uh, because it's a global course, so that means, um, People from different time zones will come in, and there is no so it's not a face-to-face -face course where we actually uh, uh, appear online like this, and then talk to the students. So there is no time uh, time limit or time zone that we uh, sort of uh, stick to, and uh, the, the the comments or the interactions uh, online will come as and when it comes because uh, uh, if you go into any of the courses, so this is something that I would really really like people to go to is to uh, go into our uh, future learn um, uh, uh, future learn um uh, campus program because we do have uh, a specific program with uh, future learn uh, to give uh, our staff and our students chance to get certificate which is normally uh, have to be uh, taken uh, and you you pay to get the certificate uh, with the with the special program you can actually get the certificate for free so you can actually experience the learning uh, within the program and norm and because of the social the social nature of, of the program uh, uh, it's it's like a it's like a forum that you uh, discuss uh, um, your answers or your 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 learning with uh, your peers from different time zone, from different uh, from different countries, from different backgrounds. So that is the kind of uh, learning um, that you that will happen in in the platform. So um, of course you you come in when you come in. It doesn't have to be uh, at three o'clock in the in in the morning to 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 cater for people from for example from from the US. So you don't have to do that. So you come in uh, when you come in and you reply to the comments uh, sometimes uh, uh, from uh, the learners who are uh, enrolled in the program. Uh, so I, I see the, the chat. Uh, sorry, um, so I hopefully that's, that answers the, the question, Dr. Mazia. Yes, yes, yes. Got it. Okay. Thanks. Right. Uh, Dr. Bala, you want to add to that? Yes, okay. So technically, uh, one MC course, we have duration uh, when we want to open and close it. Okay, uh, we call it run. Let's say one course, uh, let's say this one, uh, bagi contoh, Islamic calligraphy. Let's say it runs from uh, uh, February until maybe May. Okay, so within that February until May, 
as many people can enroll in this program and they can commit uh, only two hours per week until they can uh, complete all the syllabus. Okay, and I wanted to show you example of syllabus. It's, it's simple. Okay, uh, this and that's why everyone can do this. Okay, although it takes time if you are busy nah, to give commitment. So week one usually start with introduction. So there will be weekly background. This is the module that I mentioned to you, subtopics or module. Okay, we will start with getting started. So this is when you explain uh, about the course content, the how to complete assignments, and then you introduce the topic, which is Islamic calligraphy. And then you, this one, uh, they walk through the gallery. Okay, so week two is actually the uh, first topic. Okay, and here they explain the essential tools for Islamic calligraphy and basic calligraphy writing. It's very simple. Um, if you can imagine in your pro forma, I think it will. This will be like week one or week two of your um topic, uh, with topical, topical topic. <laughs> okay, and the third one. Baru nak start with your own calligraphy writing and writing. Okay, and this one is much more content based. Okay, so they introduce several uh, uh, content and then they have feedback and suggestion. So each of these modules have their own activities, watching videos or discussion. And then there is a small assessment and assessment in future learn is very simple. It's just MCQ question. There are four, tapi I forgot, I, I remember discussion. Uh, apa lagi Zai? MCQ? Apa lagi? Um, yeah, yeah, the, the, the normal ones are those, uh, but you can actually uh, design uh, more complex questions, especially yeah. in micro credentials. They don't scare them. They are very expected, kan? Uh, it's simple. Okay, Shida, Shida ke siapa yang dalam instructional designers? What are other types of uh, assessment dalam future learn? Discussion is one of the uh, assessment, doctor. Discussion then, and quiz. Both, yes. Apa? And third part, eh? Yeah. Ah. Uh, and uh, third party. Kita boleh guna juga third party for uh, the assessment. Macam. Party contoh. Contohnya, uh, Vocaro, ah. Padlet, uh, something like that. App. Uh, yes. external you can also combine it in your uh, future learn or MC course. Okay, Dr. Zahid, we had question again from Dr. Zahid. Ah, yeah, so the, the question is, uh, will faculty get a portion of the revenue generated from micro potential? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, we do uh, have the, the revenue uh, model that we are finalizing with um, uh, the office of uh, PNCA. Uh, and also the, the management, uh, but um, the the developers will actually get uh, uh, better portions uh, from from the, the revenue. So the revenue will be divided between the, the faculty, the the, the, the developers, uh, and also the university. That's all. Um, any more questions on, on the chat? Hi, yes. Uh, I'm Shinyi again. I, I would like to find out now if we are interested to start a micro-credentialing course or at least to begin to develop one, how do we go about doing that? My, I have a problem with my microphone. Okay, the first thing you can do is just to email us at that at um.edu.my okay, and tell us that you are interested to develop one MC course. You will be then contacted by one of our instructional designers or project manager. Okay, and then we'll start uh, having meeting, uh, Google meeting, and you tell us uh, uh, and show us maybe your pro forma uh, so that we can get some uh, understanding what you wanted to do. Uh, or if you have, let's say, your PowerPoint uh, presentations that you wanted to, you know, uh, work on with us, so you can show it with to us also. And then uh, in the meeting, we will give you a template. Uh, in the template, you tell us, you have to map. Okay, let's say uh, we just wanted to know what is the big topic 
and what is the subtopics or if you can even break it down into modules okay we wanted to know that first and then uh, later on you have one-to-one -one consultation with the person in charge one of the designers will contact you and have a meeting with you okay okay thank you so much dr farah yeah welcome hope to see one from dr shin yi another one from dr <laughs> <Mazia>. <laughs> Uh, anyone interested? Anyone who is listening right now? Are you interested? Dr. Zuhairi. Uh, Dr. Zuhairi also. Three. Hari ini kita dapat tiga. <laughs> okay, any other questions? Or any other concerns? Maybe you have some worries ka? You wanted to share with us ka? Um, let us know, okay? okay Dr. Zahir um, ada ni. Dr. Fong just uh, send one question. Um, hi, I would like to clarify on the KPI equivalent points mentioned in the previous slide. For, for one MC course developed, it will be 20 points, right? Will it be considered every year for the KPI or only counted once? Okay, so the, the, the KPI points for micro credential is actually uh, being offered. Um, so that means uh, I I I can't, I can't remember the, the, the points, but uh, the developed uh, course will get points, uh, and then every run will actually count it. So uh, for example, uh, if you run the course every year, then every year you will get the the KPI points. So you don't get the you don't get the KPI point just one off, just once. It is gen it is actually be will be counted many times because you, you we repeat the run many many times mm. okay and i want want to add also uh we can say the terms lah, terms and conditions based on what the management decided lah. okay so that's what we envision it has to be like that everyone every time you have a constraint you can claim it but uh if there is a change in policy it could be uh, not like that. Uh. Mm. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then there's a second question. Uh, tie up with the private sector. Of course, I think that will be uh, something that we really, really uh, would um, uh, would like you to uh, explore, especially for the expert track uh, part. So that means you tie up with the private sector. Probably you tie up with uh, Petronas, for example, or tie up with uh, Telecom, for example. So 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 should. Uh, for you to run uh, a course together with the private sector. Um, uh, a customized course, um, I, I'm not really sure. Um, so, so if it's customized course that people can actually take, so that means it, it's not just for one client, then I would, uh, personally, I would really, really uh, like to um, look at it. But if it's just a customized course just for a, a single uh, sort of single entity, I don't think it will be a suitable for a micro credential. Uh, and the reason I, why I say that is because when you have a customized course, uh, whenever you want uh, a, a, a different corporate body wants to uh, to create another course, then it, it becomes a different course altogether. And uh, a customized course uh, is normally one off. So what we wanted to offer in our micro credentials and also MOOC is actually courses that people can take over and over again. So the, the, the customer base and the market base is actually big. And that is what we uh, are trying to get uh, with uh, the, the micro credentials because the, the audience are actually global audience, isn't it? So it will be uh, uh, a not an efficient use of our, our resources when we create a single customized course uh, let me can i add to that okay so just remember that macro credential course is um uh, properties okay so it is owned by university of malaya and any corporate body um, can be your collaborator but we own it because we have associated costs also we have to pay subscription fees to future learn every year yeah, and um, there are courses that we are hiring designers um, with the uh, equipment and so on. So uh, that means it's, it's, it's not supposed to be just for one specific group of people. It should also be, uh, you know, other people can also benefit from it. Yeah. 
But it will be interesting kan kalau uh, if we can see people got CPD points, if you can partner with association and then they can offer, they can acknowledge our course, your course, as, as one of the CPD uh, course. Um, hi, uh, can, you, can you hear me? Yes, uh, yes I actually have, I have um, two questions. The first question is, um, is the course design of the micro credential similar to like the traditional course that you need to have the exam, you know, tutorial and uh, lecture? And um, the second question is, is it the, the micro credential, it must be 100% um, online. Can we actually have a micro credential like, you know, uh, showing a skill? Like um, something like practical in total, hand on skill rather than um, only um, text, I mean, lectures and things like that. Yeah. Okay. Both. Uh, okay, I'll answer the second question first. Uh, sorry, the, the second question first. Okay, so you are thinking about uh, mixing, of course, a lecture plus like hands on activities. Am I right? No, it's 100% hands on. Okay, it's hundred percent. Either you know, either through computer or either through that the student coming. Well, well, maybe actually, um, I was thinking that something cost like uh, design for the farmer. You know, because I'm involved in biotechnology, so they might want to learn some techniques that which they are not able to learn, um, whether they have no time or something, right? So if we, I can design a course that is only hundred percent practical, um, through by uh, through computing or through the um, hands-on um, experiments and things like that, um, would it be possible? I think it depends on the content. Okay, can mm. we deliver um, the content based through videos? Okay, let's say you are we're shooting you in the, you're not shooting you, much of <laughs> your video shooting you in the lab doing some demonstration of how to use the certain machines uh, for farming. Okay, and then uh, the activity will be they have to apply in their own context. Okay, and you have discussions. Uh, that could be done. If you think, uh, I think that is the maximum that we can do. Um, but you, I, we don't have like virtual lab for them to test things out. Not, uh, we don't have that facility right now. Well, actually, there are some virtual lab kind of um, software available. Um, especially in some of the private university, because I was from the private university, so we actually um, did use um, this kind of software, right? It's something like simulations. Student can learn how to do a pipetting. The student can learn how to run the lab, manage the lab, and from there. So these kind of things, right? Um, some of the farmer or even the company staff, they might be interested, especially in the agriculture sector. Because you know um, some um, knowledge they might want to know, like how to screen the fragrant rice in the field, right? Um, farmer might want to know because they have a seed contamination, all those kind of things. Yeah. So. Name of the virtual lab. Um, lab. I can't remember, but I, I maybe I can send send later the the virtual lab lab. Yeah. Okay. One that I know is a lobster. Uh, yeah, similar to lobster. Ah, okay. Yeah. So, um, depending on the um, maybe subscription, okay, mm. as our as um, our designer said, we can give um, you know it, you already created your uh, course in future mm -hmm. platform. Mm -hmm. and you give a link to that virtual lab. Okay, mm -hmm. that can be done. So that the person have to have an account with uh, the virtual lab. Yeah, uh, it's a separate one. But what I'm talking about is that we do not have the facility to develop virtual lab in FutureLearn. There is no um, okay. such features yet. But we can give a link and ask the students to go to another few, uh, platform to use. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. So question, it, question number okay. one. Yeah. So so question number one. Uh, is it is it similar to the the lectures and the tutorials that we do? Is it, the 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 simple answer is actually no. So uh, we've got feedback from people who uh, develop the uh, the online courses uh, uh, on 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 different platforms. It's, uh, it's a different. So I would say it's a different ballgame. The content may, might be the same, 
but then the way that we uh, the way that we de- deliver the content is actually much more exciting because it's going to be a self learning uh, self directed learning kind of material so the the way that you design the way that you craft uh, the the learning materials is going to be actually better than uh, what you do in a face to face situation so that's for delivery uh, the assessment is also something that uh, uh, something that you need to uh, also think and design because uh, you are um, although it's a course at the university level but you can have uh, people who are actually um, probably retired professor who's who's going to uh, go through the course or uh, at the same time it will be somebody who just finished school who's uh, who's also be uh, who's so yeah, interested to learn and also to to get the certificate from the course so you need to uh, actually sort of design the course for greater audience than uh, university students although i would say that uh, you can actually put in a um, uh, prerequisite so that means uh, you, if you design a, a, a postgraduate level course so you can actually uh, write there at a prerequisite the learners must have uh, a degree in something some something before they uh, should consider doing the course so you can actually put that but uh, it can be just anyone who, who want to, to sort of uh, go in and learn and get certificate from that so the, the design of uh, delivery the design of assessment uh, will be actually uh, we will be facilitated facilitated by our uh, instructional designers to help you to craft the best kind of assessment that can fit um, the the market or the the audience that will will actually go through your courses. Um. Uh, can I have one one more questions? Um. Can we design a course for the youngsters? You know, like secondary school. Um, I think I, I don't think uh, there is any limitations on that. Okay. Uh, because um, to allow them to have earlier exposure to to you know some of the things that may actually help them in daily life or something or even in prepare them to come to the university. Yeah. Um, I, I, think, I think that would be something that you can actually also uh, think about. All right. Thank you. So there is a more there is a question in the text. In the in the chat, uh, do you have any tips on what can cause the family will attract the general public? Um, right, Doctor uh, Sahih, Doctor Kishne, huh? Doctor Kishne. Oh, okay, Doctor Kishne. Okay. Um, I would like to if the cost is not for UM, but we were to design one bit the MC carry. Uh, would this be uh, considered? Yes. Uh, so we can actually uh, uh, allow, or we can uh, we can. Uh, so facilitate the courses uh, for um, uh, the one that you want to design, but it should be within the expertise of your uh, within the, your expertise. So that means if you are, uh, for example, from uh, a faculty of um, uh, faculty of arts and you are teaching media studies, for example, so uh, we would want you to. Uh, teach a course on the, the, the topic so you don't uh, go in and teach um, uh, for example um, uh, 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 sustainability science because you are an, because you are an expert in, in media studies so we uh, that let the people from uh, faculty of science design the uh, faculty of science uh, or science kind of courses so that that's what our our message to those who uh, like to develop courses so it should be within the uh, expert area of expertise that you are in. Okay, and the next question from Dr. Aisha. Do you have any tips on what kind of courses that normally will attract the general public? It is something to do, is it something to do with income generation able kind of topic? Okay, um, I have several suggestions. I think, um, first of all, um, you should look into your existing course, your existing academic course, and pick a topic that you think will be will generate interest from other people. Okay, let's say uh, you're working on a uh, specific technique, okay, and um, uh, it is something that is new, for example. Uh, so that could be um, some uh, a course that you wanted to develop. Okay, and that is. Yeah, perhaps your niche area or expert area. Okay, another one is 
I realized that from our experience uh, coming up with the in the process 26 courses anything related to culture and language will interest people okay um, in the pipeline we have a, a fun in Korea let's learn uh, Malay language or something like that they, they are interested in something uh, that they want to know our culture better so people from um, APM for example or API or even Sydney creative okay uh, you want to highlight the cultural the Malay culture uh, the Malaysian way of doing things for example okay those are topics that people are interested to okay another one People are also uh, keen to know or keen to learn about if you have CPD related course, okay, something that can help them uh, become a better expert um, or a better uh, learner in that area. Okay, and what I, the last one, I think I call it academic supplement course. Okay, uh, academic supplement is that it's an existing academic course that people find it very hard um, or very kind of difficult and they need uh, supplement, they need extra like tuition like course okay uh, for example research method or statistics okay Quan uh, qualitative research method for example okay uh, they may have learned um in in current setting okay like hybrid learning ka or, or the face-to-face -face learning ka, but they need something extra they need uh, a animation based or video based presentation something that they can work on their own okay they can move forward or go backward okay they can repeatedly um looking at the screen and and until they understand they can do drill and practice okay that is also something that you may want to also develop okay so it can be combination of both uh serious and not so serious <laughs> um, uh, if i would like to add um uh, uh, the kind of courses that uh, generate uh, generate attention uh, now um, uh, which is in trend is actually uh, uh, with regards to sustainability so uh, anything about the uh, SDG uh, uh, about uh, COP26 um, so anything that, that has to do with sustainability will also generate a lot of interest especially from from the western countries because um, they um, so so those are that, those are the kind of uh, courses that um, we uh, are uh, we are welcoming uh, right now because it is part of the the, the larger sustainability uh, agenda that uh, we are doing using the climate change and so those are the kinds of uh, courses that um, people are attracted to so the, the niche area of of the UN uh, of course is the the culture and traveling is something that uh, people are uh, generally gravitate to but. Um, with the expertise, especially from from the universities, uh, sustainability courses, uh, medicine, uh, things about medicine. So, so uh, courses on, on medicine is something also that, that people are uh, really, really sort of um, like uh, attracted to. And uh, I can say that uh, for as as far as future learning is concerned, the science science based courses um, uh, on in medicines in, in climate change is something that they. Uh, the, the platform itself is um, uh, quite highly supportive of so that means they are always on the lookout for uh, courses on uh, sustainability and so courses on the advancement of, of medicine and so the, the the impact of medicine to the world so it's, it's this like big topics that they um, sort of uh, like uh, the courses to be developed on but uh, of course uh, we as the as the uh, developers uh, will be able to know what kind of uh, market that there is. Yeah, having said that, we also will uh, advise uh, whether the, the course or the topic or the content is suitable or not to be developed as MC. Okay, some of the courses um, may not be suitable. Uh, so we will advise you to uh, choose another topic, okay, or another subtopic that we can uh, extend it to other general public. Okay. Moderator, anything else? Any question? Um, from there's no question in the chat area. So maybe you can open for last round. Anyone from the participants? All right, no. Maybe we can like 
uh, see a raise of hand on participants today that are willing to commit for micro credential. <laughs> How many do we have right now? How many participants? Uh, we have around 30. Ah, uh, okay. Let's see. Oh, I there. see. We have Dr. Mai. Ah. All right, Dr. Fong, Dr. Debershing. Okay. So at, at least we have three now here. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, before we end, can we actually take a picture? Uh, can we have participants to on their camera? Mm. Let's do that. Mm. Okay. See Dr. Elsa from QMAC. Dr. Elsa wants to do something on QMAC related. <laughs> uh, we see a few family fa faces here. Oh, Dr. Tengku, Dr. Zaridato, Dr. Detio. All right, uh, Shida ke? All right, Shida, you ready? Yeah. All right, smile. All right, one more, smile. One, two, three. Okay, thank you. Um, one, one last um, iklan. So I wanted to um, uh, get uh, people to know uh, our um, special offer with um, uh, FutureLearn. So uh, we are running uh, a special campaign with uh, FutureLearn, our platform, uh, that will offer uh, the uh, free courses uh, or access uh, to uh, short online courses that will uh, you can actually claim the certificate for free instead of paying the, the certificate fee. So uh, you can uh, go and learn uh, any courses from uh, all the partner universities in future platform what you do is uh, you just go into the link that i gave you it will take you here uh, to this page and then uh, you what uh, the platform needs you to do is you need to put in your your um mail uh, address so it's for uh, the lecturers and also for the students so you just put in the, uh, let it, your um mail address and then you actually get uh, an email from the, the platform to invite you to uh, uh, register for uh, the, the platform. Okay. All right. So, okay, thank you, Dr. Zahi, Dr. Farah, for the wonderful session. So, hopefully, we can see the participants coming to EDEC, or maybe by tomorrow we can get a few emails requesting for micro credential. All right, um, before we end the session, please do not forget to fill up the attendance form and feedback form as your um, opinion, your feedback is very precious to us for our future program. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam.